plug this just briefly. There's a limited amount of these books. It's an ebook. We have a limited amount available at InfoWarsStore.com. Steve Pachinik Talks. And it is a thick book on every subject you can imagine. This is my hand-signed one that he sent me. We have a limited amount of these at InfoWarsStore.com. They will sell out in a matter of minutes now that I'm plugging them. Guaranteed, it'll be sold out in 15 minutes of the, uh, the, uh, the amount we have. You can go to StevePachinik.com and buy up the rest of them because it's an ebook. He only did a limited run of this handsome, thick, soft cover. Steve Pachinik speaks and or Steve Pachinik talks. Infowarstore.com or 888-253-3139. But that's not why he joins us just for about 10, 15 minutes. Then I'm going to go to Mark, Tom, Mike, and others. I wanted to just out of the gates... He has a lot of sources and intelligence agencies all over the world, co-wrote some books with Tom Clancy, former head of psychological operations for the State Department, ran the Camp David Accords, helped found the Delta Force. You know who he is. Came out and told us about the bin Laden situation 12 years before it turned out to be accurate. Uh, exposed 9-11 as a stand down, bare minimum. He joins us, former member of the Council on Foreign Relations before he resigned. He joins us. I don't know what he's going to say. I don't know his view. I didn't know Wayne Madsen's view earlier. From the Twitter comments at Real Alex Jones, I'm hearing people think it's Israel. That's about a third of the Twitter comments, or they think it's fake and TV fakery. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, Sandy Hook was fake. We had blue screens and the kids going in circles and out of the building, and, and it wasn't even really a real school. That we can prove is fake. Some stuff is fake, but this looks real to me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Steve Pachinik, Dr. Steve Pachinik, uh, can uh, correct me. Doc, I don't know your view on this, but give us your first approximation, or maybe you've talked to your sources and know what happened. What are you hearing uh, about what went on in Paris? Well, Alex, always a pleasure to come on your show, but let me tell you, I grew up in France and Toulouse, and I'm looking at one of the cartoons, which literally implies exactly what is going to happen. We are always on alert, and uh, we want to wish you a happy new year. Uh, until the end of January, we have not been attacked so far. So from my point of view, this is a highly provocative newspaper cartoon. It's not about freedom of speech. It is about provocation. It is about instigation. In the world of intelligence, this type of uh, agitation propaganda and cartoon would require an attack by al-Qaeda. Whether it was a Yemeni or not, that's not as relevant as the fact that I think this is a major distraction, this attack from the real problem that Hollande has in France, which is a major bankruptcy of the economy, the fact that Holland Day has been a total disaster, the fact that socialism is a disaster, the unemployment is up into the 20s, the fact that euro is falling repeatedly, oil is going down. So this, to me, is nothing more than an opportune occasion for distraction, intentionally or unintentionally, it's not relevant, but the French have a very good intelligence system, it's called the Dizium Bureau, they know exactly what to do, they know how to go in to have the people, and they have as anywhere from about 6 to about 15 million legal and illegal first, second, and third generation Moroccans, Algerians, and Maghreb uh, Muslims. They know the problems are there, but the real issue at hand is not the freedom of speech. This is absolute nonsense. What this was, these cartoons, as I'm looking at them, are nothing more than incredible agitation propaganda on the part of the French, which reflects no no ability to express freedom of... So what is the point of the agitprop? We know... The agitprop was not to distract from a much major, a much more severe problem. Europe is falling apart. France and Germany cannot get along. Germany has warned repeatedly under Merkel that France must remain under a steer program. France cannot do it. France is bankrupt, in effect. Their sovereign funds are almost empty. They cannot maintain... So are you crisis. saying Hollande or the French intelligence may have staged this? Well, I don't know if they staged it, but they certainly allowed it to happen because here's a cartoon that says so far, hey, we're okay until the end of January. And lo and behold, they got attacked just at the point. And By the way, I haven't seen all those, and I don't speak French no, like you, you don't do. speak French, but if you look at the various cartoons, you can see this is far more than freedom. Well, that's breaking news. I mean, can you tell me what issue that is so we can find it? Well, it's the latest issue. It's literally the one that says, toujours de attendant en France. That means attendez. That means wait, watch. We are okay to the end of January. We haven't been attacked so far. 
And literally, if that's not an invitation for an attack, either intentional or unintentional, I would be surprised. Well, I mean, it did come out when this first broke three years ago that this facility is connected to the CIA and British intelligence. Um, But, I mean, a lot of stuff's connected to intelligence. if, If this was intelligence, I would say this is very poor intelligence. Because when you do agitation propaganda, you don't really have to go out of your way and show a Mohammed, the Holy Prophet Mohammed, as a, a gay. You don't have to say that the Quran is shit. These are things that are totally beyond the realm of even uh, effective intelligence. It shows a very low level of our effectiveness, be it French, British, or American, just the way we did in 9 11. This is, shows you such immaturity in terms of intelligence and in freedom of speech that, you know, this is just uh, waiting to happen whether it was intentional or not. Sure, let me shift gears and and, uh, throw a curveball at you. Huge news breaking with Clinton and others connected to this big financier, convicted of pedophilia, with dungeons in the Caribbean and all this. I mean, clearly some of that stuff's going on. The royal family connected to it. But the question is, why is it all coming out now? It just reeks of an internal power structure blackmail war. Uh, and notice this has gotten that out of the papers. Do you have any intel on that? Well, what I would say, and, and I wrote it this way, is that Alan Dershowitz, who's been the uh, a puppet boy for the Israeli lobby repeatedly, has been attacked. And this is, let's say, the way uh, the system retaliates to say, okay, enough is enough. Israel is out of control. You, Al Dershowitz, you're out of control. You've been denigrated. Your uh, legitimacy is in question. At the same time, it's a, a clear message to Hillary Clinton and the Clinton family in general to stand down. Under no condition should she proceed to r- run in the elections because this is only the beginning of what's going to come out in the future. And it's going to be much worse because Bill Clinton will be the one person who will literally deny Hillary Clinton the uh, presidency of the United States. He did it in 2008. He will do it again in 2016. His narcissism is so malignant that he cannot help but destroy Hillary Clinton in the process. And that's what he's doing. And well, it's, a, it's a bad sign that they've been defending this pedophile, and so have the royals circling the wagons. Well, you know, the royal family isn't royal. It's a German family. They're not very bright. They're quite stupid. The real royal family is really the uh, queen mother who was Scottish and Diane Spencer. That's royal. The Windsors are nothing more than the name of the building in which they live in. Most of them are German, and they are total idiots. They have nothing to do, but if Britain wants to pay for idiots to be there... Well, you know, that's actually true. You know, most of Queen Elizabeth's brothers and sisters are mentally ill uh, because of the inbreeding and have to be locked up. In well, fact, they're stupid. I mean, whatever the reason is, if you want to pay a fortune and, and England can't afford it, they're going to be leaving the euro, and the pound is not all that great. England has not been moving, and they have a very serious unemployment problem. You want to pay that kind of money for idiots? That's your, that's your prerogative. I don't believe in it. The United States didn't believe in it. We fought three wars against Britain, one in 1776, the second one in 1812, and the third one in the Civil War. So we don't need to talk about Britain. France is a problem. France has to get its act together, but I think it will be totally bankrupt. Germany well, you made an astute on. statement there. It is on record, but most people don't know it, deep in the histor- histories, that British intelligence did stir up the South and kicked off the whole Civil War and then denied the South the armaments they promised them once it started. Uh, but that didn't end up working. That's w- No, British intelligence was the one that literally wanted us to be broken apart. It did not want a republic because a republic would have been a very severe threat to its financial interests, mercantile. And then subsequently, Queen Victoria was the greatest drug pusher in the world. Sure, I mean, opium. You know, they talk about it as the great with Adam. No, she was the greatest drug pusher in the world with uh, opium and cocaine coming right out of China. So the nonsense of Britain is really the nonsense of Britain. More importantly, we have to understand where America stands in this and the fact that we are not threatened by these acts. If we do stupid things like the CIA torture or the stand down or our military goes out of its way to facilitate stupid acts, then we will pay, you know, the price that we need to pay and we will internally punish our own people. But as far as France is concerned, they have a very good intelligence system and they have a very strong national police force. But for me to believe that this was accidental or unintentional, it's very hard, given the fact that I'm reading these uh, cartoons in French and they're way out of proportion. 
this is beyond disrespect of any religion. If you put Christianity in the same position, you would be a, a shame and a pause. Are so you saying it's beyond it's beyond the public financing of piss Christ? I'm sorry. Remember the famous crucifix in urine? Yes, I know the man. I mean, I know the man who did it. He was a friend of Blumberg. It was the Brooklyn Museum. It was ridiculous. It did nothing more than to get his name in the paper, and nobody remembered it. No, so, I know, but I mean, here's what I'm saying. It is true that there's a lot of anti-Islam stuff meant to be provocative, and it gets ignored. anti-Christianity, too. Sure, sure, but I mean, this did get a lot of attention at the time, and it appeared they were hyping this up. If this was a long-term operation, what is the point? I mean, you've seen the video, obviously, of the shooters. They look very professional. Uh, Colonel Schaefer says they look like above Al-Qaeda. What do you, who do you think they are? I mean, any ideas? I think they're very well trained Yemeni, whether they are supported by the French, who have very strong presence in the Maghreb and, and in Yemen, uh, near Saudi Arabia. The French have had the, the Foreign Legion, which is in Cote d'Ivoire, and in, uh, in uh, Galvi, in, in Corsica. You know, the French have allowed this to happen. It's as simple as that. It, this is not anything that's, you know, a higher order of intelligence. It occurred in Toulouse when you had a sole bomber who shot a few, uh, several Orthodox Jews. That was real. And now, Hollande, and classically, you have a country that is in such severe... I can't tell you how bad shape France is in, that it's beyond redemption if they don't get rid of Hollande, they don't get rid of the socialist system, they don't get rid of... The well, yeah, they have a 100% tax... Excuse me, one hundred and one percent tax on the basically nouveau riche now. Why? And, and then the socialists have been caught with secret Swiss bank accounts, and they don't pay the taxes. Just like uh, you know, the the uh, rat from New York, Al Sharpton wants to raise my taxes, but he owes five and a half million. That's correct. But why would you want to stay in France unless you are wealthy? Most of the people there are looking for retirement. Even the young kids in their fifties right now, when they go into twenty. When they come into the workforce to the age of 20 to 50, they're looking at about retirement. There is no money in France. The euro is not worth anything. You're talking about the collapse of the euro. This is way beyond. Anything. You've been saying that for years, but now well, it's, it it's, uh, it's now it's every demographic shows it. Now, every, how, when is it coming then, and what will it cost? Well, it's coming now. The, the euro has been falling from 134 to 119. It'll go down way below one because the price of oil, they're not able to grow. There is absolutely no growth capacity within France. The unemployment has always been a secret. If you want to talk about freedom of speech, the fact is the French government has been one of the biggest liars and miscreant behavior in the world, including Sarkozy and the, and the socialists. They've been putting around uh, uh, factories all over France, shutting them down and then declaring they were bankrupt or they're not bankrupt and they're shifting around everybody, but they're not producing anything. Other than wine and cheese and a nuclear power, they really can't produce very much. Airbus is about the only plane that will be sold at this price at a much lower uh, value. Of the no, I know. They are falling apart. No and then Germany's gone off a demographic cliff. They're dying. Uh, I tell you, it's... Uh, Spain, Italy. Right now, Italy has 45% unemployment. Spain has 25% unemployment. Portugal, 25% unemployment. Sweden is anti-Islam. Holland, anti-Islam. Britain, anti-Islam. France has, has just begun to see the beginnings of what anti-Islam is. Every day you can go to Paris or Toulouse or Bordeaux or any city and you will see protests either against working, against the system, or pro-Islam, anti-Islam. The country is dysfunctional. Just a All bunch of idiots fighting with each other. Yeah, I've talked to family that's been over to France lately and who've been there many times, and they say there'll be a leak in the hotel pouring water and no one wants to fix it. Everyone's on vacation. Uh, the police aren't working. I, I mean, it's just, it's just a joke. It is a joke, but unfortunately it's a sad joke that can spill over into the United States. Our job is to make sure that our council officials do not give visas at the appropriate time. And those who want to leave France can leave France to other parts of the world. But I've told my family repeatedly they should leave over 30 years, and they don't listen. So that's up to them. Wow. My point of view is this has been going on for well over 20 to 30 years. But when you look at the cartoon, Alex, and let me tell you, in French, this is really disgusting. It's disgusting because it's not humorous. It's not in any way satirical. It is nothing more than a, 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 uh, an insult to Jews, to Muslims, to 
everyone. There's nothing but a slap in the face, but... It's beyond a slap in the face. You don't have to call, you know, it, uh, Muhammad. You don't have to show him as gay. You don't have to say the Quran is shit. This is totally inappropriate. If we were to do this with the Catholic Church that was once dominant in France, believe me, they would come back after you with revenge that you've never seen. And the French were no sweethearts during the war. Remember, they took out 74,000 Jews without the Germans asking them to do anything. So the French have a very strong history of collaboration, of surrender, ineffectualness, and war. They've never won a war since Napoleon, and Napoleon wasn't French. He was Corsican. So this nonsense that we see now is nothing more than a distraction, which is a far greater problem than France. All right. Well, Dr. Pachinik, thank you so much for the time. Thank Again, you, your your ebook is available for download at stevepachinik.com. A limited number have been printed, and they'll be sold, uh, I predict, in the next few minutes. Dr. Pachinik, thanks for the time. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, to everybody. You bet. Bye. Always interesting. That guy really knows his history. Interesting guest to pop in. We appreciate him coming on. Steve Pachenik Talks. A blow-by-blow -blow analysis of current events by a real spy master. This book has what they don't want you to know. Learn about the corruption of the Catholic Church. The untold story of Edward Snowden. How Hollywood films are secretly dictated by the CIA and more. A must-have in order to decipher mainstream media lies. Get your signed first edition at stevepachenik.com.